I came for the first time in 2000 in, uh, in DC working for Morton Blackwell uh, at the Leadership Institute. And when I arrived, people used to say, oh, you're French. Uh, France is a bunch of socialists run by Libertine leaders, right? And two years later, when I came back with some French conservative students with the Tocqueville Fellowship, a program we create to bring French conservatives to experience the American conservative movement, the joke the American would crack to us, say, oh, you're eight French conservative? Guys, let's take a picture. The whole conservative <laughs> movement of France is there. <laughs> or they would say, guys, please, don't take the same plane. Because if your plane crash, the French conservative movement is dead. That was 25 years ago. And to be honest, I understand they had some reason to think so, because we had no real conservative leaders who had any chance to win election. We had no famous uh, conservative journalists, no Rush Limbaugh, no Tucker Carlson. We had no think tanks, single issue group. You have almost no civil society organization. No media, no journalists, no guests on the conservative side. So I understand you guys, you thought that, but that was 25 years ago, and things totally changed. Let's just look the last European election that occurs in France a few weeks ago. The three leaders of the three party of the right were three guys who could be in the room today. Before, if we had one of the three, we'll be hopping in champagne, you know? But we had three strong conservative leaders who just disagree on political strategy, but we know they are. So that's an interesting point to know. What's happened? How did this occur in 25 years? And I'm gonna tell you what's happened. Yes, we had new talents arriving, but how did they emerge? They emerged because we had a silence and determined conservative revolution happening in France. And when I'm talking about a revolution, I'm thinking the classical analysis of a revolution, you know, the three step, you have a set of ID, you promote your IDs, and then you take the power. Look, they did in the French Revolution. The ID was an enlightenment. They promote their IDs through their circle of thinker or clubs that diffuse the ID to the leadership and some media who promote it to the people. And then they took the power, the political power, fall in their hand like a red fruit to take the reference of Antonio Gramsci. Antonio Gramsci, the founder of the, the Communist Italian Party, that would be later on the reference to the 68er, another revolution that uh, brought the leftists to take over the media, create civil society organization, and brought to power François Mitterrand in 1980. When you guys in the US, you did exactly the other way around. You had a Gramsciist revolution, but run by conservative when the Goldwater boys, after the defeat of 64, decided to build a whole movement that brought Ronald Reagan into power in 1980s. So, things change, I told you, in a quarter of century in France, which appear has a long time on a political scale, but a very short time on the historical stage. And we had three revolution. We had a civil society revolution, we had a mediatic revolution, and we had a political revolution. First, let's start quickly with the civil society revolution. The French Revolution roots, always in mind, set a principle that there should be no, not the thickness of a paper cigarette between the state and the citizen. The Le Chapelier law in 1791 was the beginning of a destruction of any corporation, any uh, civil society uh, bodies between the state and the citizen. What happened two centuries later? You have people in France from the right or the left that think that any problem occurs, you have to look to the state to get the solution. But once again, that was 25 years ago. And suddenly you had a real change. Now we have dozens of think tanks, single issue group, action group that didn't happen, didn't exist at all 25 years ago. What happened? Two main reasons. First, you have civil society entrepreneurs. Second, we apply techniques that we discover here, thanks to you guys. And when I say we're talking about less than 10 people that build these all uh, networks, what do we learn from you is that to create an organization that doesn't depend from the state, 
And last, you have to raise fund. Obvious for you, but that didn't exist in France. And so we applied the technique of Richard Vigri and Martin Blackwell on these guys and developed this organization based on fundraising. But fundraising, we discover, is not just raising funds. It's creating a whole network of conservative. It's educating them, mobilizing these people, and structure a whole civil society network that would allow new leaders to come out, new ID to be uh, prepared for next government. Second, let's go to the mediatic revolution. Same, we had no media. Not journalists would come out. When I was working in the journalism, first I start at the Communist News Network, close to here. I worked to a uh, world leader and a young guy called Tucker Carlson. And then I worked to the French media, and believe me, when you're conservative in French media at that time, you would hide. You would never come out. That was really not a good thing to do. Otherwise, you're dead, professionally and socially. Today is not the case. You have plenty of journalists who are conservative, media who are conservative, and guests who are conservative. What happened? Two things. First, you had the internet that we had in all our country, and we see new influencer, new guys coming, new ID being brought, uh, brought to the mainstream media. But we are the second tools or a second weapons that we didn't plan so much. The civil society organization was more planned, here was less planned, is that we had wealthy businessmen who had the genius idea to say, hey, let's buy media. They bought TV, radio station, newspaper. Just one guy by himself, he bought so many that he's driving the left nuts in France today. His specialty is to buy leftist media who are not working well. <laughs> he bought the news channel called ITV. Anyway, it was the last news channel in France, run by leftists. He bought it, and he said, now we're going to invent a new concept. In this TV, now you'll have conservative. And so this TV was losing millions of euros every year, is now making money, and this TV was the last one in France, is now number one rating in France. And we're doing that now in the radio, newspaper, and we had in and floating new journalists because we created six years ago a journalism school um, that trained hundreds of journalists. We had 30 journalism schools in France. They were all leftists, big leftists. So a journalist, even a owner of a conservative media could not even hire journalists. Now that is changing. Second revolution, the mediatic revolution. 2000, you would find only in the media conservative in name only. Today, I can't even name you one of them. It's to tell you how we totally reverse the trend. Third, the political revolution. Here, I have to be honest with you, we have nothing to do with that. We, we have to be thankful to one guy called Emmanuel Macron. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Macron is a hidden ally, you know? I have to tell you that, and to our leftist journalist, yeah. He's a good friend of us. He's a hidden guy. What did he do? To do politics in France, like in the US, you had two party system. You have like two coalition. The left around the Socialist Party and the right around the Republican Party. Center right, center left. They switch every five to 10 years. They agree on each other, you know. Yeah. Go. You have to run faster. Yeah. Nobody uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> and then Macron came in. The guy in the 30s, he never ran to office, never was elected, joined Holland government, and two years later, 2017, create a party, be elected president. That was huge. First, it was interesting to see, he was a candidate of the globalist, of Jacques Attali, Alain Minc, all these globalist guys. They really come out and say, okay, now we don't lose time to be on the center right, center left, we'll have our own party, our own leader, our own guys, we'll be in power. You know, it's like the Davos meeting, at the beginning, it was discreet or even secret, and then suddenly they say, okay, now we have an agenda. We'll be open about what we, want, we plan to do. Let's face it. Exactly what happened at the pretty same times. So Macron is in power, and in being this young guy being president, what is very good for us, very interesting, is that the whole guard, all our conservative name only, and left and right, were totally unfashionable. 
They could say whatever they want, they could not be elected anymore. French people didn't believe it, wanted them out. So you have a new generation was able to come. That's where we have a conservative young guys coming in. The second thing he did is creating this globalist coalition that is in power. He, now we went from a two-party system to a three-coalition system. You have his coalition, and you have now the leftist coalition, pro-immigration, pro-Islamization, uh, uh, pro-state, pro-taxes, I mean, the good guy, <laughs> wokeist. And on the other side, you had a totally reshipping on the right around the national rally, uh, whether nationalist, anti-immigration, pro-sovereignty, and things. So you have these three groups, and what happened in the uh, last election is uh, an impressive change. You know, you have the Republican Party just crash, the Socialist Party just crash. Just give you figures. Republican Party had 360 feet, uh, 60 seats. Um, um, 2012, if I'm, I'm correct, 360. 180, 2017, now there's 60 seats. On the other way around, the National Front, 2017, had 1.5 million votes, eight seats. 2022, 3.5 million votes, 89 seats. And two years later, yet later, just last weekend, they went to 10 million votes, and that is 144 seats. So you may have heard that in the poll they were supposed to govern, they could win the election. And it didn't happen. After winning the EU election by far, it was an historical score for the national rally with 33%. Nobody did this score before in France. Just to give you an idea, Macron was just 15%, far behind. And the Congress election that occurred right after, after the EU European election, Macron decided to call for new congressional election. It was a surprise. He didn't have to. But the polls say, okay, if National Rally won, they would won the Congress and could get the majority. And the first round of the election, that's what happened. They were far ahead. But on the, it was without counting what happened between the two rounds. And what happened is that the coalition of Macron and the coalition of the leftists allied together and changed to a debate on topics to a referendum for or against the National Rally. And the National Rally in this referendum lost. But on the topic in the first round, which are the big three topics in France, was immigration, criminality, and third, it was economics. No debate about green environment, Ukraine, all topics uh, that were hot few years ago. So where are we going now? Uh, with no majority, with three groups, that are pretty uh, similar forces. We're looking to Belgium, Netherlands, all these countries who know uh, what, how they create a government where there is no majority, but it never happened in France. So we have no idea how Macron is going to govern. Is he going to choose a technical government who's just going to continue to be in power without reforming anything because they won't be able to do it? Is he going to call for new election in one year? He's, he's not allowed to do that before June to 2025. He, is he going to resign himself under the pressure? Everything is uh, open. What is sure in 2000? 27 will have a presidential race, and if the train is continued like it is, you'll have a confrontation between Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the candidate of the left, uh, of the leftist, I should say, the Islamo-gauchist, uh, and uh, the candidate of the Nationalist Party, Marine Le Pen. And then it will be kind of a, a very interesting set uh, to see. So, to summarize uh, what I wanted to share from you from France, is there is a strong cultural battle at stake, and we are really improving. In 25 years, really, it's impressive what uh, have been achieved. Um, the second thing is that what seems impossible to have a national conservative uh, president of government is really feasible now. It's not a question of could they win, is when will they win. That's uh, what is at stake today. So thank you very much for your attention and happy to answer any questions.